found a lot of complacent, you know, complacency about, yeah, well, we really, we're really not that good and really we don't care about it and everybody knows it. And, and, and now they're, they won't stand to listen to that. We have a lot of great kids out here that really want someone to care about them, want somebody to trust, want somebody to, to teach them and lead them. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. Let's go, let's go. Wands is waddle. What's wrong with his hand? Nothing broke. Oh. Get in class, go, go, get to class. Get to class. Go, go in there anyway. Wait and behave. What do you do? You don't need to be babysat, do you? Let's head to class, please. All right. Take your hat off, brother. Take your hat off. Oh, you sure? Abdi. How are you feeling today? Good. You all right? Why you always got your shirt tucked up, man? Swag. Ain't no swag. <laughs> you always got the same green shirt on, too. Take your hat off, please. Let's go, let's go, let's go to class, let's go. The bell has rung. Let's not hang around. Let's not hang around, let's go. You better get to class, young That's man. Off in the class. Look today, coach. Thank you. You're gonna be there, right? Yeah. What's up, Peter? I wanted to come say hi to you because you kept saying we hadn't seen each other in a while. The guy is just electric. He's so animated. He, he sold us on him. He came in with a plan, with a vision. He came in uh, raring to go. He sees the overall needs of the kids and, and really wants to, to bring the life lessons. Dan talks to you about life. Dan connects with you as a person. Coach Jacek is just, from right off the bat, um, started off with uh, saying that we're a family. Parents believe in them. They know that. I'd have my kids play for Dan because I know that Dan is going to help them be better men. <laughs> My hair is down. What? Wait up. My hair like sticks. Like they go in raised fingers. They're like splinters. <laughs> My mom got offended the other day because like we got in a big old argument. She's like, oh, I'm tired of you with football because it takes too much time. And I was like, I was like, mom, how else? She's like, she got really mad because I was like, how else am I gonna get into college? Because I'm not smart. And I was like, and then I was like, it's not like you can pay for it. And she got offended how I said that because she said that like, that's what she wants for me to go to college. And she says that she'll do whatever she in her power. So that offended her. I could get in fights with her, I can whatever, but at the end of the day, there's always food on the table. There's always there's always a warm bed to sleep on. There's always a, a roof on top of our heads. And it's just, that's why when, whenever I'm gonna like make it ahead in life and I'm, just, I'm gonna repay her everything that she did for me, and everything that she sacrificed. People out there, they, they don't know, like they got, they got stuff handed to them. Yeah. Remember, remember when we went to Chaparral, like freaking, they rolled up in their own cars and stuff, like, we don't get that, like, brand new cars and stuff, we don't get that. This year, like, it made me happy, like, the white cleats I have, those, those are like the first pair of brand new cleats I've ever had, like, like, eighth grade year, my coach gave me some cleats, freshman year, Daniel gave me some cleats, sophomore year, my, my coach gave me some cleats, and this year, 
I worked, I helped my teacher out, like with landscaping and stuff. And I earned some money, and I finally bought myself a, my, my own pair of cleats. Some moments today were really good, some moments were pretty bad. You cannot expect other people to motivate you. You need to motivate yourselves. You need to motivate one another. Don't expect us coaches to do it. You need to want to play to be here. You've got to want this. You can't expect this to be something that someone forces you to do. Because then you're not having fun. Adam City has a great history of being competitive. Um, just been unfortunate the last seven, 10 years. The last winning season they had was, I think, 2005. And uh, so we just want to recapture that. Right, let's see something here. None of us uh, expected to win a game. None of us expected to actually be on the field and keeping up with an opponent. Opponent. If we were on someone else's schedule, they'd be like, who's Adam City, you know? We were like a joke to the school. For so long, it was, we had, we just hadn't won, you know? And so our kids were experiencing loss year after year after year. There was just a lot of disconnect. There was no pride. Um, it, when I first got here, there was no pride in the school, let alone any, any football team. And a lot of these kids in this building, they don't know what success feels like. We've had times where we've had 10 players on the sidelines total, and we've only had three or four people in the stands. I would say we have to go through a lot more struggles than kids out of their programs would have to go through on top of having the burden that we haven't been very successful in years past. I mean, imagine what we could do if we had no excuses. When I got the job, boy, people were coming to me, talking to me about some of the kids that were playing, and oh, watch out for this, watch out for that, watch out for this, and pleasantly I'd tell them, well, thank you very much, you know, thanks for your concern, and then why I walked away, I just filed it in the trash, like, I'll discover him on my own. I'm a good kid at heart, but I'm kind of a troublemaker, honestly. I'm kind of the bad influence that you don't want your kids hanging around. You know, I do, I represent the old Adam City and what we used to be, and it's not, it's not great, and I'm, I don't want to glorify that by any means, but that's just the way it is. That's, how, that's who I am. He, he's a good linebacker. If somebody gets in his face, he's going to run him over. It's just, it's just that simple. I kind of do what I want and don't really care what people have to say or think of me, honestly. Who is Tyler Gallegos if he doesn't have anybody loving him? He's lost, right? And uh, I think that might be why some of the times he has acted out emotionally because he has felt um, isolated or lost or kicked to the curb. Men make decisions that are necessary and they do things because they're the right thing to do. Boys do what they want. It's a tremendous amount of pressure, I would say, to finally be the people that uh, turn this program around. It would mean the world to me. It would uh, make everything I do seem worth it. Now, I don't know what's going to go on tonight out there. Nobody does. But I'll tell you this. You go out as one force, one team, and you strive every play to play together with a focus and a passion. I don't care what the score is out there tonight. That's going to take care of itself. Lock in right now. Here we go. You need to let them know the very first play of the game that you're ready to roll. These guys aren't ready for you. They think they've already beat you. At the freshman game, all right, there were people over there taunting us, saying that varsity sucked. Tyler, stand up. Son, the first time you get to hit somebody, rip him in half. Let's go. Let's take these guys out. You got me? First time you carry the ball, Antonio, you run somebody over. First time you get to block somebody, Dominic, you knock the crap out of them. We play football for 48 minutes, high intensity, downhill, fast. 
and then let everything else play itself out. You let them know Adam City is here and we're here to stay. I don't care about the score. I want to see some fire, some desire, and some energy flying down and around that field. You guys ready for that? Yes, All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Give a warm welcome to our Adam City High School First year, Adam City coach Dan Jasek celebrates season opening win on August 30th, 2014 in Commerce City. The Eagles went 4-76 and in previous 80 games. It's been a long time since Adam City has won a football game. Like really long, <laughs> years long. But the Eagles, under new head coach Dan Jasek, did just that in their season opener, beating Thornton 21-8 Friday. Adam City had gone 1-49 and in the last five seasons their lone win being a forfeit by Naiwa on September 2nd, 2011. We have a long time to go and a lot of games to go and a lot of business to take care of, Jason said. coaches, high school coaches, 
all saying, great job, Adam City. We're no secret anymore, man. So see what you've done? Put yourself in a position of where now we're going to see some competition. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to overlook this no more. Tyler Gallegos did not go home last night. We do not know where he's at. I just spoke with his father. We have to find him. You understand me? He's hurting right now. There's no doubt he's probably hurting, right? We have to, we got to keep him safe. So we got to get a hold of him somehow. As soon as you hear something, you need to talk to me. Not talk to somebody to talk to me. You need to talk to me. Is that clear? Tyler has struggled. I mean, he is a senior that that has been taught some very negative things the last few years. And it's not his fault. When he was a freshman, like, the classes that were older than him, like, hazed really bad. We'd hear stories about, like, things going on in the locker room. He's in a position now where he's one of the leaders, and, and sometimes that's tar hard to deal with, you know? It's easy to think about and say, yeah, I'd do great there, but when you're in that, guy, that position, and you are the alpha male of the program and the school, that sometimes can be a little overwhelming also. Since he's so aggressive, nobody wants to tell him something. Like people, some people are scared of him. He's kind of like, I don't care. You're not going to do anything. Like he, he feels like he's just a senior. He doesn't have to do the right thing. Tyler's exactly the kind of kid for, I think, this program where he would need football more than football needs him. Tyler had a rough night Friday night with three minutes left in the game. Stand up front, Tyler. <coughs> Talk to these boys. You're one of our captains, right? Right? Everybody makes mistakes, so we don't hold people down for mistakes, but we expect you to rise from them. Like Coach just said, you rise up. All right. I'm sorry, too, for not showing up Saturday. I didn't have an excuse, and uh, I'm sorry for getting ejected, but, uh, you know, I'm going to start doing the right thing. I'm going to hold everyone else accountable, too, because we all need to start doing the right thing. We got to study hall and practice every day on time. Study hall, too. I'm going to be taking attendance, too. Need to be there. That's huge. That's huge. That's why he's still remaining a captain. Can we on the sidelines with us? All right. Now let's go get ready for practice and get to the field. As good as we're doing, I still take full responsibility in being part of that negative culture that the school has had. I feel terrible about what I did too. Like, cause I know everyone was scared where I was. But in all reality, I was just kicking it back with some homies and smoking a little pot, just doing, celebrating actually. He's just a unique young man. I mean, I'm proud of him. And he's, yeah, he, he, he walks, he marches to his own beat. He, he just creates his own beat. Whatever that, whatever that is at that time, that moment, that day, that's, that's Tyler. He'll stick up for anybody. He always has. That's part of what attracted us where he's at is they were willing to accept him for who he is and that he is willing to do that if necessary. And we don't expect that to ever change. I mean, he's, that is who he is, and he will stand up when he feels that's right. I'm the senior. Like, all this is new. I'm still carrying on the old, the old way of doing things around here, which is going to parties after a game and dicking around like that. You know, I just, I don't know, there's just, I don't want to say there's no hope for me because I still got one more year here to really turn things around and, you know, leave an impact on, you know, just, I don't know, man. How you guys feel? Good. Yeah. Feel good? Yes, yeah. sir. Nice, nice. Well, you should feel good. You guys have worked hard. You've done everything you need to do over this summer, and it's showing. It's showing. What you've done is amazing, OK? This first win in, in, in seven years, it's a long time. You know how I many people are excited about that around this community who deserve that? You deserve it, and they deserve it. With that, I wanted to give you some, some great news about your coach, who uh, was named Denver Post uh, Coach of the Week. Yeah. 
Cardinals just to get the knowledge at the Bronco game. They're going to suit him up, make him linebacker. Oh, <laughs> get his neck that broke. That won't happen. Get his neck broke. No, no, no. Um, but that's good, all right? But that's all because of all the hard work that you guys have put together, all right? You guys are a family. Football is a family, all right? So everybody sticks together, everybody works hard together, everybody wins, and everybody loses together. Ready to go? Cool. Good afternoon. Welcome to Broncos TV. I'm Neil Devlin, Denver Post High School Sports Editor. With me, Adam City Coach Dan Jasek. He is our first Broncos High School Coach of the Week for the 2014 season. And Coach, how sweet was it? That night was a big celebration. My seniors here had never won a game. And that was big for them to feel in that sense and to, to basically embrace that. Relax, Antonio, just relax. <laughs> these kids went through a lot. I mean, I don't think I'd ever thought of how these kids were gonna react for practice a week after they had won. They had never been there before. They had never had a win and then how to prepare for the next game. That was a whole new position for them to be in, right? And that might sound a little funny, but it's, it's a fact, because the kids were kind of like, wow, we won a game. And you know, you have to kind of keep that in perspective. Phew. Long days. Fun days though, right? Rather be doing this than anything else. Coming back. Some of these kids don't understand commitment. Like today, we had a few missed the meeting because they don't listen. You know, giving these kids every opportunity to be successful, being very lenient with them. It's going to quit real quick, though. You get that flexibility when you start from the ground up. <laughs> Coming out. Pound and pound and pound. Here we go. Coming back. Coming back. Go. Coming We'll know where he's at. Kind of concerning to me. We'll find out. He's in the locker room. Joseph looked at me. Coach, he went to get high. That's what Joseph said. Because I had to talk with him after, the, after practice yesterday. And I told him, I said, you know, we have a drug problem on this okay. Hey, boys, it's just another football game, right? You're prepared all week for it, you're ready for it, right? Hey, we're out of city. We're out of city, that's who we are. All we need to do is play with some intensity and fo keep focused on who we are. Who are we? We're out of city, right? That's all we gotta worry about. We gotta worry about who we're playing, because for us, on the schedule, they're just next. Back behind, back, back, back. Go your job, go out there and execute. Let's stand, let's go. Everything matters on three. One, two, three. Everything matters. Let's go, we go. Cross the line of scrimmage, John! All right, let's go. Break it down, let's go! This is the second game. All right, second half, we can do this. Come on, Omar, we got this. All right, that was a wake-up call. This isn't no fucking movie. Get out there and let's kick some ass. All right, everybody's frustrated. We're all frustrated, I'm frustrated. It's not, it's not about that, it's about these kids. Right now, these kids are in old Adam City mode, right? So we got to fight through it. We just got to, we got to survive. And maybe this is a great thing. I'm always looking at the positive side. Let's survive. 
Let's fight. Let's fight for another day. Teach these kids how to do this shit. In football or anything you do in life, you will hit a bump. You will fall down. We took it in the chin a little bit today. It's easy to sit back and go, colleague, coach, we all want to be great. <laughs> well, that takes commitment. We've already taken a major step, boys, and you should be proud of yourselves for that. There are going to be days in the future, I guarantee you, that we will be on the other side of that. Embrace it to where it hurts. And right now, there should be a little bit of something inside you that's disappointed. That's got to motivate you to want to keep your brothers out of trouble. That's got to motivate you to be with your family instead of being on your own. That's got to motivate you to commit to what we're doing here. Because it's all about you. And then it becomes about us. Rolls out of the pocket, fires a deep one to nobody but himself. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I bet they let you guys do whatever you want there, huh? I bet nobody cares about anything. I mean, I bet you guys can just sell drugs in the hallways and just write in front of the teachers and just do anything you want, basically. Perception is we just shoot them up, bang bang kind of school and. Everybody's in a gang and everybody wants to fight and everybody hates each other. Not the case. Commerce City is a place of, of great pride. Um, it's filled with uh, families who've been here for generations and some families like myself who just recently arrived. For the most part, our, com our community is uh, industry-based uh, blue-collar workers. Commerce City is kind of secluded. Um, in terms, I mean, Denver's right next to us, but it kind of feels like you're, you're, you're separate, but yet so close. I didn't hear a lot about Commerce City. Um, being in Denver, um, you get entrenched in Denver. And so I hadn't heard a lot about Commerce City, which in itself speaks um, to the school situation. You don't hear a lot about schools. They're not doing anything innovative or, you know, Adam City High School, what's going on out there? Um, we didn't hear anything. I like it. Like, when people say, oh, Commerce City's ghetto and stuff, I don't think so. Like, I don't, I would like to live in Commerce City as an adult and, like, raise my kids in Commerce City. A little of what they say is true. I mean, you automatically see how the high school are, is doing. You know, the only high school out here. And, you know, academics have struggled a little bit, so that's just one, that's just another thing that they can use to say, like, this is a bad place to live. Empowerment, man, it's about empowerment. Demos. Let's go, people. Let's go, people. Let's go, people. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a get real moment. Take a look, team. This is your class. This is your updated grades. Yeah, let's talk about this. Just, just so you know, F, 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 D, F, B. F, F, incomplete, B, C. Dude, guys. What is going on? So the turnaround process is a byproduct of low performance and low achievement throughout the past five years, five, six, seven years. They had been declining pretty steadily and uh, in the, to the point where the school district was at the bottom of the state, second from the bottom performance wise. And I think that uh, there was a lot of concern. So the state comes in and they say, you know what, you guys have to get better. The reason why Adam City has been this way is because it just hasn't been uh, paid attention to or maintained. We suffer from a significant amount of turnover um, with teachers, with staff, with administration. There hasn't been a, a, a consistent model of practice here for at least four or five years. The challenge is not the kids. The challenge is changing the hearts and minds of the adults. That's the real challenge. 
Carolina. This is Mr. Phillips. How are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm just calling because I'm concerned about you, young lady. How come we're missing so much school? Do you work? You don't work? Okay. Do you have a transportation? Do you have a car that you drive? No? Do you live far from the school? So you can walk to school? Okay. So help me, help me understand how come you're not here every day then? They've just been so used to kind of making excuses not only for themselves but also hearing excuses in their family and things like that that you just got to, like you said, it's just keep continuing to ask those questions and ask those questions and eventually the truth will rise. When I first got here, one of the strong indicators of a negative culture was no one spoke to anyone else. You'd walk in, nobody'd say hi to you, you wouldn't say hi to anybody else. Um, that's changing. Kids speak to one another, they speak to teachers, teachers speak to teachers. A place where people aren't dreading to be, but rather wanting to make it better. I love to teach you guys. Do you think I like to answer 20 emails a day? No? Do you think I like to clean the desks? Who, do you know who cleans your desks? It is my job. I didn't go to college for desk cleaning. But it's something that I do anyway because it's part of something that I love. And it's something that I think you guys deserve, so I do it. So no matter what you choose, even if you choose something you love, there's those days where you're like, oh my god, I don't want to do this. And I just have to be gritty That's and get through it. Practice. Yeah. Tell me, explain. Like during practice, I really don't like doing the little cone drills we do, even though mm -hmm. like they take forever. But even though I don't like them, like we still got to do it anyways, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure most of us don't really like it at all. You guys are not littles anymore, are you? No. I know, but you guys aren't adults quite yet either. I know you're on the cusp, but in the in the adult world. <laughs> You're gonna do the same job every day Ew. for nine hours? Do you get to just be like, I'm bored with this, I'm not gonna do this anymore, Mr. Boss Man? Do you get to do that? Yeah. Um, you need to entertain me, switch activities. <laughs> Mister, my job needs to be more hands on. Is that how the job world works? On the line. We're gonna run till we find us a leader. Everybody can get some of this. Gasser! Right now! Get across! Let's go! You better touch the damn block! Hey, yeah, touch and go! Touch and go! We don't just do once across! Touch and go! Who wants to be a leader? In the past, like when everyone would try to step up and be a leader, like someone else would be like, shut up. Like they'd kind of reject them. And people would fear greatness because of others, and they would say, Stuff like, like if someone stepped up to be a leader in the past, it, it'd been like, you don't want to be a leader. Just sit down and just be quiet. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, bro. Get up, bro. Come on. I can. Come on. Nah. Come Let's on. go. No, really, Let's go. On. At least walk it. Come on. Get up. Come on. Let's go. Baby, you wanted to play football, is it? It isn't gonna be easy, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get up. It isn't gonna be easy. Let's go. Come on. It isn't gonna be easy. Let's go. Let's go, it ain't, it ain't middle school. You got this, big boy. Let's go, baby. Keep your feet going. Let's go. Keep your feet going. Shut off. Hey. Here, buddy. Here, buddy. Come on, chill the fuck out. You're fighting to get the fuck out. You're fighting to get the fuck out. Get the hell out of here, come on. Get your ass out of here if you're going to fight. Shut up. Get the fuck out of here then. We're building a family here. Go in the locker room. Take your damn gear off. You're not part of our family. Fuck you. Line up. Line up. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about right here. Heads up. Eyes up. Everybody better pay attention to this. Until you're willing to be, to sacrifice yourselves for everybody out here. I don't care if you like them or not. It seems only going to be successful when everybody's willing to give them themselves to even those people that they don't think appreciate it. We will never go anywhere without a leader. And we're still, in, still dealing with some of the stuff we dealt with the last four months. People just not going to practice because they don't want to go to practice. 
people not going to study hall because they just choose not to go to study hall. People going wherever they want, whenever they want, however they want, and not being accountable to anybody, even themselves. And the definition of that is failure. Our kids come from cycles of poverty. There are uh, factors that indicate that, but it doesn't mean that they can't learn. I think, I believe that as adults, it's our job to educate kids. It's our job to make sure that they learn. That's why we're here. We're here to promote environments that allow them to achieve academically, regardless of what they bring. We support kids in learning how to deal with their current environment, but then also have an eye on the future. What do you want to be in five years? How do you want to get out of the cycle of poverty? How do you want to escape some of the things that are going wrong in your life? How do you set goals to get better? Kids will rise to high, to high expectations, and I, I would argue that kids of poverty and most kids of color can really identify with what it's like to struggle, and many times they operate much like adults. On the inside is savory brisket from Texas. You guys want to watch? My mom didn't finish high school. My dad didn't finish high school. And I'm already a junior in high school, so I'm almost there. And my goal is to go to college, and it's really hard because I'm undocumented, so it's going to be pretty hard to, but we're in the process of getting there. He's been one of our leaders since the beginning. Every day. Every day. I've never had a problem with him about grades. He's bought in since day one. He was there through the summer. He'd walk to practice. He'd find a way to make it happen. Back when I had no facial hair. <laughs> I was born in um, Culiacán, Sinaloa. It's in Mexico. It's kind of by the western shore. And uh, I came to the United States when I was five with my mom. It was just me and my mom back then. And um, we struggled a lot to get here. And, and uh, when we were here, my mom, she automatically got a job. She was working hard already. My mom's been working hard, like, uh, like I said, she's a janitor. Yo siempre le digo que él estudie para mejoría de él, para mejor, para que esté mejor él, para que no tenga que andar trabajando como nosotros, fuerte, todo el día o en la noche. My mom works from, from 4 all the way to 11 at night, so we get home from school, my little brothers are there. I have to, I have to cook for them and give them food and watch out for them. Yeah, as you can see, our room is just all small, all crowded. Hey, this is so good, pineapple juice. Yeah. What? Hey, man. What are you first, Kevin? I, I've been yeah. there. I, I've been there with my brothers, like, way more than my dad does. I feel like I'm raising my brothers. And that's why I wouldn't want my brothers to mess up either. That, that's why I try to set the right example for them. How great of a father is he going to be someday? How great of a husband is he going to be someday? He's going to be successful somewhere someday doing something. Because his mind is, his focus is straight. Can I bother you for like five minutes? Yeah. Not even. Oh, yeah, it's because um, I was kind of interested in, in going to uh, those college field trips. Yeah, yeah, coming yeah, yeah. Up. I'll put your name on the list, and then we're, we're going to get a date and let you know what day that is. Is there a day that works best for you? No, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter? Okay. Yeah. Just as long as it's not um, during the season, that'd be good. It'll be after the season. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it doesn't matter then, Chris. My mom was always there, always cared, pushing me to learn, um, knowing that um, education was the key. First day at work, wearing a tie and... Uh, um, hearing from my mom how proud she was knowing that I could inspire the future generation to um, achieve whatever they want to achieve. Um, and if that's blue collar, then that's fine. If it's a college degree, I want to push them. I want their families to uh, feel the pride that my family feels. Um, at the end of the day, it's just a piece of paper, but um, that piece of paper means a lot. and. Um, um, I'm blessed to be able to work with the future generation and at my home, at my school.
right here is one suscuela. Yeah. Hey, man. I don't know about y'all, but I'm having Wolverine for dinner tomorrow. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, our game got one. Be there, all right? Adam Sandler. This is not like him at all. Listen up. So who was with who was with Juan last night? Last. So what happened, Dom? You I mean dropped him you dropped him right there at the apartments? Okay. Alright, everybody take one of these. Alright? I want all the trash in the trash cans, okay? And clean your helmets off. Tyler Gallegos, I want you up front here with me. We talked about a brotherhood yesterday and committing. You know, and it's a process. It's a process. It takes time. Right? And some people commit quick and they're bought in. It's just like life. And some people take time. You know, we have to be patient with some. And we had some discussions about that yesterday, right? And Tyler, we're just waiting for you to commit 100%. You feel me? You got me? I missed you at the bonfire last night because you weren't with us as a team. You understand? You're too valuable to us, Tyler. And I think part of your problem, and I want you to look at me and hear this. I think part of your problem, like a lot of us when we're younger, or, or you guys are experiencing, is that you don't know how much these, these, we love you. We love you, Tyler. We love you. I mean, that word is such an abused word that maybe we don't even understand it. But you're part of this. It's sad when you're not with us. Right? You're our senior captain today. Right? I expect you to be out front leading us to victory. You ready for that? Yeah. You want to be a leader, right? You want to be a captain, right? Then you got to fulfill that responsibility. Right? It's not a part-time gig. We all struggle with things in life. Right now we got a brother that's not here. He's struggling. A lot of you guys might not know what goes on in his personal life, and that's up for him to share it. But he's got a rough one. What are we going to do with that Juan? If he doesn't show, we got to go out and make sure that we're strong. What's the name of our team? Adam City, right? AC, right? So what I ordered for you guys, for the sides of our helmets, AC. Now, people are going to look at that and go, oh, they're just the Adam City Eagles. What's this represent to you? Always committed. What's it represent to you? Always committed. Right? Oh, brother. Thank you. Where you been, oh, brother? Where you I been? I don't deserve a hug. Well, no, where you been? Where you been? I've been at my house. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll take care of that later, yeah, but we're course. glad to see you, brother. I'm sorry, yeah. What's the deal? What happened? Talk to me. Talk to us. Yeah, I don't even deserve a hug because I slept on my alarm and I had to walk here because I'm sorry, y'all. I'll let you down on game day. You're here. You didn't let us down. Let's go. Sorry, y'all. What should we do to him? Nothing. Give him a kiss. <laughs> Give him a hug. We were praying for this dude. Give him a hug. Let's go, baby. Yes, Give him yes. a hug. <laughs> Scare, dude, I got tears in my eyes, dude.
beautiful day. It's a beautiful day to get out there, get points, get tacos. Let's go. Let's go. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Tyler's like, I really just don't even know how to feel. And you know what? This is the feeling we want. This is the feeling I want you guys to be hungry for. This is the feeling that I want you to think about on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays when we're practicing. This is the feeling you got to seek with all your heart. Enjoy it right now, and I want you to enjoy it good. But come Monday, it's go to work for Lincoln. What Coach said about good consequences and bad consequences is totally true. You know, like everything has a consequence, and if I start doing things the right way, you know, more good consequences will come to me and this team. There's always consequences, right, Tyler? Yep. What are the consequences we're feeling right now? Good. Consequences are good because we're doing the right thing. Tyler guy goes, come up front. It's no secret about my marijuana use, as everyone in here knows. But um, with all these good consequences going right now, you know, I don't want to hold anyone back. I don't want to hold myself back because it's my senior year. I want to be the best I can be. So I'm, I'm quitting today. I'm done. This morning was my last time. So Daniel, Joseph, I still need you to ride my ass. If you catch me slipping, you know, step up, be a teammate, and help me out. That's what I asked from you guys. That's all I got to say. I mean, I decided today to quit smoking pot as like, to show everybody that I've bought in and I'm totally committed to this team. I don't want to go back on my word. Um, so I'm going to try as hard as I can to stay off it for good. The marijuana high only lasts two, three hours, but the natural high that we're getting from all the success is like, it'll last a lifetime. I'm gonna be fucking scoring crossbow on my forehead for nothing. You better get a hold on number 28 right now because he just went in there and that could have been a complete block in the back. And he just goes go, go. He's hammering everybody. Okay, got you. Gonna... Got you. Just... I got you, I got you. Go ahead, Luis. Nice cut wall, Javon, Javon. That's you, baby. Oh. On who? 28, taunting. Joseph, get over here! I need a linebacker! Really? Really? You're really? Really? 
You're self-destructing! Joseph, come here. Come here, Joseph. Are you gonna get off the bench and come play some tennis? He's out. Have him sit. He can sit the half. He sit the half. He sits the half. We're not freaking playing this. We're not playing this freaking baby game. Hey, Joseph is out. Let's go, D. He's not going back in. Let's go, D. No, I'm not coming to him. Put him in the freaking, put him in the locker room right now with his teammates. Quit. Yeah, he said he, he got in a fight. He said he was backing up for his family, and I said, dude, you have to grow up right now. You have to, that's not important right now. And I'm just like, and, and I was just talking to him during those three plays. Five minutes? And then, hey, okay. And then I was just, Joseph, get your head on straight. And then I was getting him to chill out. And Go get him, get him out here. I'm not going to get in his face. I'm just going to hold him accountable. Get over here, Joseph. What do you want? What do you want? Coach, you just pissed me off, and I went to go talk to one of my brothers. Okay, but, okay, you know and why? he was like, get away, and I was trying to help him out, and he was like, get away. Okay. That's why I fucking got pissed, and I said, fuck you. Okay, all right. I can accept that. You say forget about it, and then I'm just like, Come here. I'm trying walk to with coach. Me. Walk with me. Listen to me. I have a responsibility to 60 guys, not just one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you willing to go out there and do it? Are you willing to go out there and do it? Go away from me. Go away until, right? You understand me? Look at me. You, we've been through too much. And I love you too much. And you might be angry at me right now, but you'll understand it in the long run. We have a responsibility to other people, don't we? Don't we? Right? So let's bygones be bygones. And it's over, and now we're going to go out and play a second half. You want to do that? You ready to go out and win a game? Huh? Give me a hug. Okay. Give me a hug. Don't you not hug me. You understand what I'm saying? All right? You can be mad at me all you want. We'll talk about this afterwards, okay? All right? You got me? All right? I love you. You just not, don't understand tough love. I'm just going to make you get be better. I want to see you. I want to see you playing D1 football someday. You understand, my, my son? Coaches ain't going to tolerate what you do in there, right? So I got to teach you that. But go have a game because you love me, okay? Go. Let's go. Let's go. Our team's out there. See you lay your heart out there for them again. That's what's transformation. That's what's transforming. And and I think that Tyler has probably bought in more because we as a coaching staff have continued to not kick him to the curb. We could have done that a number of times ago, you know. And and uh, but the reality is he's no different than a lot of these other guys. He just hit. <laughs> His knucklehead things are a little more out in the open or a little more evident or, you know, that's the kind of personality he is. He's, you never have to guess at Tyler. Tyler is like, here I am in your face, kind of a, you know what I mean? And I'd always feel more comfortable around guys like that than guys I got to try to figure out. I feel like all these guys are my brothers and he's just, he's the father. That's kind of how this relationship is with the teammate. It's just, it's all good, man.
praying for everyone. Just praying for the boys, praying for the parents, praying for the families, praying for you, praying for me, praying for my staff. You know, that's what you do. You just lift everyone up in prayer. I mean, we need a field goal. You want to go home, Berto, or you want to go to Gonzalez and Scott make the tackle for Central. It's going to be third down and five at the 16. Humberto kid great today. I'm going with him. Jesus Gonzalez makes the stop at the 14-yard line. Get that D to a C, get that C to a B, get that B to an A. Blake, get something done. He's got an I in English, which is McLaughlin, which is that last one that he put before. He's got a D in letters. He's got an F in stacks, which he's showing in stacks a C. There's multiple discrepancies on it. We're going to take all these sheets and we're going to pull up their IC and double check to make sure nothing's forged. Okay. Right? And if there's a question, right. we address it. Right. What do you think we should do? Right. What do you think we should do? Yeah, let's hear you. Honestly, I don't know. Just, uh... I don't know, you guys told me if I fucked up again that you guys were going to kick me off, so honestly, I don't even know what to tell you guys. But you made a commitment to us. I know, And you that's said what I'm you weren't going to fuck up anymore, and you almost cost us our whole season. So, we did all agree on that. Like, I I don't want to cut you, bro, but we did all agree. It's kind of like there, there's no loopholes to this deal. I love you, you're dead. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. Or I'm kind of mad at you. I'm just, I'm, just I'm really hurt that you lied to us like but, that. Dude, yeah. Everybody, everybody in favor, him. everybody wants to cut him, stand no, up. Don't no, they literally wants, don't want to cut him, but we should cut him. Who thinks, who feels we should? Freaking love Mauricio, but so do I. you guys are like, Everyone does. you guys are just, like, don't want to cut him because you, like, he's a senior. He, should, he shouldn't be what doing he, that, guys. What he did was selfish. He's a senior. Okay. Here's another one, right? Oh my God. What happened today? I think he might get suspended. If that happens, then, you know, and I'm trying everything in my power. I, right? I do, too. I try to help him. And he, and he, he just doesn't want to, he doesn't want to buy in. I messed up bad, and I lied about a grade. If I would have played the game and we would have won, it could have cost us the season. It could have cost us so much more. It could have cost us everything just so I could play one game. Cartel con mis manos defiendo, así me entretengo y me gusta el trabajo. Con mi cuerno y mi lanza, granadas, chaleco antibalas ajustado al pecho. Yo cumplo las órdenes del jefe. 
24-7 al pendiente, la lealtad para mí es prioridad. Así solo llegan los billetes. We got some business to talk about. And it's not very happy business. Tyler Gallegos will not be with us for a couple weeks. A lot of you guys know a little bit about what's going on with it because all you and some of you are involved in that drama. And you thought it was tee hee and ho ho and funny stuff when it's destructive. He is out for tonight because he has been suspended for five days because of some things that were on social media. That's all I'm going to tell you. Guess what that means, boys? We don't have Tyler tonight, and we won't have Tyler next Friday. So when you guys think about what, how you were involved in this, because it's all drama, you better learn a lesson too. Is that understood? It's always great, it's always great to win a game. It means more how you act when things don't go your way. That's the most important thing about life. Because when things are going easy, it's easy for someone to be smiling and happy, right? When things go wrong, that's what builds character. That's what makes you stronger. He didn't move his damn feet. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Who's down? It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication, a lot of heartache. We, we, we got to go get it. Now, we got to go get it. I'm not happy we're on two and leg. That's not something I'm just accepting. I'm not accepting that. I don't want you guys to accept it either. And the way we change it isn't by fighting, isn't by making excuses, isn't by pouting. It's about having a purpose turning it into pride, and it'll help us with some passion. Does that make sense? Yes, On a personal level, it's just been tiring. I've never been a head coach before, you know, trying to balance that with my job. I'm still learning a lot and uh, growing a lot and long, a, lot, a lot of long hours. And It's been a personal challenge, you know, trying to, trying to keep everything upbeat. Um, and then also balancing that when you have to be tough on the kids. Teach us to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I just want success for these boys. Whatever they choose to do, I want them to graduate on time. I want them to have the time of their lives. I want them to believe in themselves and believe in one another. And I want them to be able to, to have, have a strong sense of self-worth and, and a, you know, a good, stable sense of um, commitment to what they want out of life. I learned so much in this past season about like life. Like just my, my whole perspective has changed about everything, just the way I act, like even outside of practice and outside the field. My grandpa wasn't rich, neither was my grandma. My mom worked her ass off. We're illegal immigrants. We literally, when I first came to Commerce City, we were living like 15 people at home. Like, you know, this, we worked hard. Like, this is truly, like, this isn't Drake or nothing, but we, we did it. We started from the bottom and we, we're here now. Adjustable beds, you get a dresser, a closet. Oh. <laughs> but. Pretty cool. Right. 
first little start of being away from home, you know, you know, make it your own. This is awesome. And my mom, you know, she, she has her she has her battle scars like her back. She got hurt from working. You know, my mom, she she deserves a break. That that's what I want to give her when I make it to college. When when I get my good job, when I have my big old house, my mom's gonna move in with me and she's she's gonna live with me. And I'm gonna take care of her. And she she she's always been the type to say like Ooh, Juan, if you if you ever leave me, if 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 you ever love your wife more than you love me, you're I'm gonna I'm gonna beat your ass. And <laughs> it's just funny. It's just like my mom. I just love my mom. Look it off. Well, my thing is, see, this is my thing, Lisa. Now he's put himself in a position with, with Mauricio and him where they're skipping practice and going getting high, and how much are they committed to this team? And we've already been through a whole lot. I mean, this, I feel like it's just, uh, it's just repetition. Of, and this time it wasn't even, they didn't even come to practice. He was gone for a week and then he, and, and you know, he didn't even come to practice. I mean, so I don't even know. I'm, I'm at the point, just to let you know, you probably can talk to Mark about this. I'm at the point of just telling them both that they don't need to be on the football team because they're not committed to what we're doing here anyway. And I hate doing that because I've both, I've tried to give them both the opportunity to be part of it because I felt like they needed something, but they're not even, they're not even valuing that. I mean, after what he's been through the last week or two and I, we just had a long talk and The hardest egg to crack, the hardest eggs to crack on this team are gonna be your seniors. Because they are so, they are so used to it being a certain way, and they're seniors. Six months from now, they're supposed to graduate. So their, their investment isn't as high of a value as some of these other kids. It was bad, it was bad, we left to lunch and it turned into just chaos. We started throwing things out the window and then from there it led on to, oh, let's go get some eggs. And then from there, it led on to see how many windows I can hit with an egg. So we were leaving the house that we just egged and we just left because we saw the person come out. We we're like, oh man. So he called the cops and then we were just driving and driving and then he, we take a turn and we took a turn right into the cop that was like looking for us. We both honestly started tearing up and we we're all like, we already knew what it was gonna lead to, what this was gonna lead to. It was gonna lead to no more football for us. You know, I don't know. I feel like my attitude is kind of permanent. And that's a sour piece of it. You know, that's kind of the bad news or whatever. Is that's just the way it is. I'm almost fully grown. But I look around and I see these guys, they've all got their heads on straight. And that's why I'm so excited for them. They're doing it 100% the right way. And it really sucks that I couldn't have two or three more years with Coach Jacek. Because, man, we would have we tore shit up, really. Ryan Alley. <laughs> Accompanied by grandmother Ken Mitchell and the aunt Dante Blue. I don't know, it's kind of heartbreaking, honestly. Like, I would rather be down there and have them calling my name on senior night. But it's whatever, I guess. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> but, and like, shit happens. But I can live with it. I just gotta kinda like, move on to that next part of my life, you know? Of like being grown up, but still like maintaining to be who I am.
I just remember even when we were playing football here, we had to be escorted by police just from the locker room to the field. So, you know, there was always that Adam said he's like a tougher place, but I think that's where it's almost changed from that being a tough, rougher area to just quitting. You know, I don't know if it's a generation thing. I don't know if it's a cultural thing, you know, but uh, for some reason when things get hard around here, they're used to just kind of letting it in. Uh, throwing in the towel, so that's what we're trying to change. People don't see behind it, it's just like the wins and losses are like the cover and all you have to go through like in the off season and all that is like the actual feeling of the book. And people just like view like the cover on me and they want to judge. As a, as a school accomplishment, winning, winning four games is a great thing because our school isn't used to winning. But to, outside of Adams 14 and outside of Adams City, four wins isn't nothing. Let's see. Um, all right, we need to move forward with this program. Today is the first day of 2015. Make no mistake about it. You, you can be part of it. I'm going to tell you straight up before we get into this, be part of it. I want you to be part of it, but I want you to buy into it. The reason I wanted to put this up here there was not a whole lot of buy-in. There's our senior leadership. Make no mistake about it, seniors lead the way to any successful program, anywhere you're at. We had nine guys here, I was praying there was ten. But we had nine guys here, how many stuck it out? How many stuck it out? Four. Four. How many wins we have this year? Four. Shocker. Shocker. It always tells a story. It always tells a story. Your senior leadership. The underdog story is the best story, right? The underdog story is the story that shows I'm not gonna accept what society says about me. I'm not gonna accept that I'm inferior. I'm gonna show you that I'm better. I'm gonna show you that regardless of what you think, I will be successful. I want them to fall in love with thinking and dreaming and those brain spark moments because the more brain sparks you have, the more successful you'll be. They're coming together, who they are, what they're believing in. You know, it's a community thing for them. It's them, when they take the field, it's not just football. It's about who they are and who they want to be.